So, uh, would you like to do another one? Let's do more. Okay, so here's another problem. Okay. This one is going to seem a little trickier. And it, frankly, I may need to do a couple of steps and then explain backwards why I'm doing them. And we see we need a Z. I don't see a Z anywhere in here. So I know we're going to do some addition. Addition is really the only way at this stage of the game we're going to get a brand new letter into the proof. Uh, check this out. Let me do a step or two, then I'll come back and talk about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a B to line two. With the rule of addition, I can take any entire line, put a wedge there, and add anything I want. So I'm pulling the B out of thin air. Add two. Now you're going to ask why. Why on earth do that? Why would you even think to do that? But notice, we've now got a statement here that says A or wedge, A wedge B is true, and up here we say it's false. That's a contradiction. Ain't no way both those things can be. So there's something very strange going on here. It's a good kind of strange, as it turns out. In fact, every time I see a, an argument where the premises contradict themselves, I know I've got a valid argument. And this is why. Notice what I can do here. You take the affirmative thing. Let's have that be the affirmative version. That's a negative version. I'm going to take the affirmative thing. I'm going to add any darn thing I want to it. Well, what I want is a Z. So I add a Z. And notice, the reason I did that was is because I knew there was a negative version up here. I can do a disjunctive syllogism to get Z. Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? So that's going to be DS from 1 and 4. So anytime I've got a contradiction in the premises, that is something that says P, another, another line that says tilde P, what I can do is add any darn thing I want to this thing, then I do disjunctive syllogism on those two things, and I get exactly what I want. Uh, so it's not actually a horrible thing to see contradictions in your premises. Keep in mind that a valid argument is one, by definition, where if it's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. Well, if the premises have a contradiction in themselves, they've got to be false. There's no way you can have true premises and a false conclusion. It doesn't even matter what the conclusion is. This conclusion could be M triple bar tilde F, for all we know. If the conclusion, if the premises contradict themselves, the conclusion will be guaranteed, as we're seeing here. Want to step in, Paul? Uh, okay. Can I add something to what you said or just emphasize something? Um, Mark made a point that is confusing to many students at first, but it's a really deep and interesting point about formal systems of logic. Um, remember that, as Mark said, an argument, a valid argument is defined as an argument in which it's impossible to have true premises with a false conclusion. So suppose you have an argument that contains or implies a contradiction in the premises. Well, that means it's impossible for the premises to all be true if the premises are contradictory to each other. And if it's impossible for the premises all to be true, then the argument's guaranteed to be valid because it's not possible for the premises to all be true, therefore it's not possible for the premises all to be true and the conclusion to be false, which guarantees the argument to be valid. Of course, this is assuming that contradictions are impossible, and that's a presupposition of all of this. So what Marx talked about was this interesting point that as, if, if, a, if a set of premises contains or implies a contradiction, then we're guaranteed to have a valid argument. And remember, though, that that doesn't mean the premises are true. Remember, valid doesn't mean true. Valid just means if the premises were to be true, the conclusion would have to be true. That is to say, it's not possible the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So even though this is valid, that doesn't mean the premises are true. And therefore, uh, since the premises are contradictory, we know the premises can't be true. So it's unsound, as Mark has it here. It's an unsound argument. So we have validity, but we don't have what we really want in an argument, which is truth. All this system proves is validity. It doesn't get us to truth, deductive soundness. Do you have anything to add to that? Looks good. Okay, that's a good proof. Thank you.